JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for the for September the second. I am Haralambos Pistoros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It underperformed only against uh, the New Zealand dollar, while it gained the most ground versus NOC, CHF, SEC and the Euro in that order. The strengthening of the dollar suggests that market participants traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday. However, the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi and the weakening of the safe haven Swiss franc point otherwise. Therefore, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, most uh, major EU indices traded in the red, with the UK's FTSE 100 being the main loser, minus 1.70%. The UK index uh, was closed on Monday, and thus its fall may have been a catch-up after Monday's decline in other European equity indices. Having said that, appetite improved uh, during the US session, with Nasdaq gaining the most, 1.39%. In Asia today, things were more mixed, with Japan's Nikkei 225 and South Korea's uh, KOSPI gaining 0.45 and 0.38% respectively, but with China's Shanghai Composite sliding uh, 0.10% and Hong Kong's Hang Seng being virtually unchanged. EU indices may have slid uh, due to Eurozone's disappointing pre preliminary inflation data. The headline rate slid into negative territory for the first time since May 2016. Specifically, it slid to minus 0.2% year-over-year from plus 0.4% instead of declining to 0.2% as the forecast uh, suggested, while the core rate fell to 0.4% from 1.2%. In our view, weak inflation data may have increased the chances for the ECB to expand its efforts to stimulate the euro area economy. The improvement during the US session may have been the result of further rise in technology stocks. Apple Inc. rose just under 4% following a report that the company asked its suppliers to make at least 75 million 5G iPhones for later this year while uh, Zoom video communications surged 40.8% after the company raised its annual revenue forecast by more than 30%. Economic data may have also helped, with the ISM manufacturing PMI rising to 56, its highest since November 2018. On top of that, US Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin uh, said that he was willing to provide more money for state and local governments, while White House Chief of Staff uh, Mark uh, Meadows said that uh, Senate Republicans are uh, likely to present a renewed coronavirus aid bill next week, offering five, uh, 500 billion US dollars in additional uh, federal aid. Now, as for our view, it has not changed yet, with central banks and governments around the globe staying willing to do whatever it takes to support their economies from the effects of the pandemic, and with headlines surrounding a potential vaccine coming on the bright side, we would still consider the latest retreat in most equity indices as a corrective phase. With the S&P 500 and Nasdaq hitting fresh records, we still see decent chances for a rebound in other indices and other uh, risk-linked assets, something that could continue weighing on safe havens. Now, as for today's events, and during the US session, the ADP employment report for August is scheduled to be released. The report is expected to show that the private sector has gained nine, uh, 900,000 jobs in August, more than the 167,000 uh, gained during the month of July. 
This may raise speculation that the NFP print due out on Friday may fall short of its own forecast, which is at 1.4 million. Nevertheless, as we noted several times in the past, the ADP is far from a reliable predictor of the NFPs. Even last month, when the ADP number was at 167k, the NFPs came at 1.763 million. With regards to the energy market, we get the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. The forecast points to a 1.887 million barrel slide following a 4.689 million decline the week before. That said, bearing in mind that the American Petroleum Institute reported a 6.360 million barrels decline, we would consider the risks surrounding the uh, EIA forecast as tilted to the downside, something that could prove positive for oil prices. Now, as for the speakers, we have five on today's agenda. New York Fed President John Williams, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester, Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari, Bank of England Deputy Governor Ben, De ben Broadbent, and Bank of England Chief Economist Andy Haldane. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.